The opacity slider in Affinity programs is pretty simple to understand. Just slide it back and forth to adjust the transparency. But what if we wanted more advanced controls, like changing the opacity level based on the lightness or darkness of our image? Well, that's where blend ranges come into play. So let's check them out. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be talking about blend ranges, what they are, how they work, and how they can be useful. But before we look at actual image examples, let's understand conceptually how they work with some simple demos. Now I'm using Affinity Designer for this example, but the same concepts apply to Affinity Photo. So in this document, what I have is a rectangle here, and I just put a simple gradient on it. It's black and white, the center is white, the outer part is black. And I just made it black and white because that would be a simple example to start with. And below it, I have a green background, which is just another rectangle. I tried to pick a relatively unoffensive color, so hopefully it doesn't hurt your eyes too much. Now, as you know, what we can do is we can select our rectangle with the gradient, and we can adjust the opacity back and forth. And really, this just determines how transparent it is. I can go all the way to zero. I can go all the way to 50%, which is kind of the average. And I can go to full 100%. So nothing too surprising there. But what if we want the opacity to be dependent on the value of the image itself? I say value, I mean levels of lightness and darkness. Well, that's where blend options come into play. So the way you access blend options is when you have an object selected, you click this little gear here. I'm sure maybe you've clicked it in the past just to see what it does. So let's click it. And it brings up this menu here. Now it looks kind of scary at first. I know the first time I saw it, I just assumed it was too complicated. So I just closed it and left. But actually I took the time to figure it out and it's not that complicated. So you notice our graph here has two sides to it. Let's focus on the left side to begin with. What this graph is telling us is it's telling us how much opacity to add from zero to 100. That's the Y axis here. So you can see by default, we're doing full opacity because the line is all the way up top at 100%. Left to right is the levels of value in our image. So the left part is going to be pure black, the right part is going to be pure white, and everything in between is going to be a level of gray. And this is why I did a radial gradient here. I don't wanna go left to right because I don't wanna confuse people and make you think that the left part is the left part of the image and the right part is the right part of our image. So let me actually do something. I'll drag this control down. And what you can see is that part of our image is getting transparent. Actually, the black part got fully transparent. That's because this left part is black and I brought it all the way to zero. The white part is still at 100%. So my center here is still fully white. But you can see if I do the color picker in the middle, I can't get the exact center, but it's going to be basically white. Now this straight line is interesting, but I actually think there's actually a better way to demonstrate this concept. What I can do is I can click and I can drag the line up here. I can also click and drag down here and I can make a very sharp step function. And I'll do that for about the 25% mark here. And now you can really see clearly what's happening. So what this graph is saying now is all the values that are at 25% and above, just keep it at 100% opacity. If the value is less than 25%, that's this left column here, put it to zero. And you can see there's this very sharp threshold here. Now remember our value range goes from zero to 255, with 255 being white and zero being black. So the 25% mark is gonna be about 64. So if I take my color picker, if I hover over here, you can see it's about 64, 65 ish or so. There's a little bit of uh, uncertainty there, but it's about that area. And that matches what we said here with this range. So I can reset this graph here, I can click reset. I can also go the other way. If I want the white part to be taken out, I can drag this down here. I'll drag this up top. I'll do it here. And you can see I've basically suppressed all the white that's in that top 25% range. And here we have a hole in our graph. In fact, you can get even fancier with it. You can drag it down this way. I can put it up here and move this down here. So now I basically have a donut shape, if you will. So I'm saying keep everything that's between 25% and 75% value. And you can see again, that's what's happening here. So I reset it and let me just do a straight line again here. There's this linear box here. So if I uncheck that, I can get a little more of a curve going. Whereas if you want it to be nice and sharp, you would click the linear button. But that's kind of a, up to you depending on how you want to do it. Now, if you ever used opacity, you've already used blend ranges and you didn't even know it because opacity is just a simple situation for a blend range. Let me show you what I mean. I have these two identical rectangles here again with our gradient and I call this one opacity. Let me set the opacity to 50%. So, you know, you can see halfway through our image as is expected. Let me go to the blend range one now. I'll click the blend range option. And this 50% opacity setting is exactly the same as just taking our blend range and doing this, making it 50% level there. 
And anytime you adjust opacity, you're basically just moving this straight line up and down. Now it doesn't actually show that on the blend options when you adjust the opacity, but that's effectively what it's doing. So hopefully that gives you a little more intuition of what's happening here. So to summarize, when you have a graph that looks like this, what it's saying is ignore the parts of our image that are less than 50% in value and do full opacity for those that are above 50% in value. And if I reset it and I do a more gradual curve, well, this one's a little harder to explain, obviously, but you can see it's just gradually increasing the opacity as the part of our image gets brighter. So in the previous example, we looked at the left side of this tool. Now let's look at the right side. And if you understand the left side, the right side is pretty much the same, except it's just now considering the value of the layers under our image. So let me close this. So this time I did make a rectangular gradient. And now I'm gonna put it below an image. So I have this image of some donuts here and I'll just fit it perfectly over top this gradient. Let me snap it. So I have this pixel layer above the rectangle layer. You can see that there. And now what I'll do is for the layer on top, now I'll click the blend options. And now let's do a similar step function for the right side. And let's just see if we can figure out what's happening. So I'll make it go down here. I'll max this out. I'll drag this down. And you can see the effect on the left. So on the right side, this graph is still the opacity for our top image. And what this graph is saying is for our top image, reduce the opacity to zero when the layer below it has a value of 50% or less. So you can see that on the left here, whenever this gradient goes from zero to the halfway point of gray, do not mix our top layer. And that's what's happening here. And for the rest of it, for the top half of our value spectrum, you can use the whole image. Just like before, I can adjust it. So here I'm saying don't mix our top layer when the bottom layer is 25% value or less or 75% or more. And you can see that exactly that's what's happening here. I'm chopping off the bottom 25% and I'm taking out the top 25%. So this is still about the transparency level of our top layer, but it's basing it on the value of the layer beneath it. So this is really useful when you have something below your image that's either really bright or really dark and you want it to come up through your current image. So what I really recommend is if you wanna learn how this tool works, set up a gradient, put an image on top of it and start playing with these sliders a little bit and try to make these kind of sudden step functions because that'll really help show you like what the cutoffs are. And I think it'll help build an intuition for how the blend ranges work. Okay, let's look at an actual example of how to use this feature. I have a composition here and I just have two images. I have this planet here with a black background and I have this background image. Now let's say I wanna do some type of composition and I'll set this plant's blend mode to screen. And it looks kind of cool. It looks like it's in space. But if you zoom in, you start to notice a problem. You can see there's kind of a seam here. And that's because the background wasn't totally black. That top edge was a little bit brighter and you're seeing that difference here. So this is a good example of when to use a blend range. What I'm gonna do is I'll click on my planet here and I'll go to the blend options. Now what I wanna do is I wanna prevent that black from shining through. So I'm gonna drag this part down. And I don't wanna blend the whole image continuously. I just want this bottom part to be gone. So I'm gonna drag this up here. And I'll drag this down to make it really sharp. And you play with it a little bit, but once I kind of set it to where I think it should go, when I check it, I can see that sharp edge is gone now. And the reason that happens is because I suppressed a lot of that dark range here. So now it's not showing anymore. And I think a lot of times that is a good use for blend ranges when you kind of have something on that outer edge, either really black or really white, and you kind of want to take it out. And by the way, this also works with text, of course. So I have my text here and something you may do is just adjust the opacity to make it look a little more transparent. But another option is to adjust the blend ranges and see if you get anything interesting there. And this would be a good example of trying the underlying composition range. You can drag it around and experiment. Sometimes the results are a little more interesting than just straight linear opacity settings. I wanna show you one other interesting example. And let's just say I have a red circle here and maybe I want it to be behind this planet. Of course I'd paint it and all that if this is a real thing, but let's just say I want it to be behind this planet. Now the planet here is very white, this edge here. So if I put my circle back in, if I want to appear behind it, what I can do is I can edit the blend range and I can say, don't blend my red circle when the layer below it is very bright. So I drag the slider down here. Again, do my step, drag it down. Slide it over a bit. And you can see that my circle is getting suppressed for all this bright value here. So I can zoom in. I have a nice clean edge. I can actually touch it up a little bit. Now, of course, there's ways to do this with matting and all that, but this is kind of just another technique. So this is a pretty good example of showing like when you would use the underlying composition range, when you want something bright below to seem like it's still in front.
Now, there are a lot of blend modes in Affinity programs. There's over 30 of them. And if you want to learn how more of them work, you can check out my video on all the blend modes. I'll put a link here. It's pretty long, but maybe you can bookmark it and watch it later. For now, if you have any comments about blend ranges, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.